I had some serious rider's block with this car. 2013 Mitsubishi Lancer GT. This car is a shitbox. I'm sorry, but it is. Is the 7th generation Lancer a shitbox? Maybe, considering the long shelf life of this generation of Lancer, but this car? <laughs> this particular car. Shitbox. This poor car has had a rough life. And honestly, in its current state, and the owner's feelings on it, his cheap wheels, influenced by feelings on the Mitsubishi Lancer as a whole. I wanted to rip the Lancer apart for its crumbling interior, myriad of mechanical issues, and overall shitboxness of it as a whole. I wrote a scathing review of the Lancer. And then I wrote another scathing review of the Lancer. And then I had a change of heart. And I went ahead and put this episode to bed for a couple of months, due to other projects lining up. And as time went on, I just couldn't go through with a scathing review of this car. I just didn't have it in me. The more I thought back on my experience of this car, I thought of a similar Lancer, owned by a college co-worker who pit for the same ARCA team that I worked for at the time. We'd pile three or four of us college kids into his little red Lancer, and we'd trek from western Ohio all over the Midwest and East Coast to ARCA races. Aside from me not liking the CVT in that car, and being a little cramped in the back seat, it was a perfectly fine, compact car. I liked the cheap Evo styling, and honestly, it felt comparable to the other compacts of the time. Again, the car was just fine. Then, I DM'd car journalists, Steph Schrader, as she's owned a 2010 Lancer GTS since new, and she's always seemed to talk highly of it. She's taken it to track days, and it's never really given her a problem since new. But our conversation settled on something I hadn't really taken into consideration before. How well a car is taken care of since new. Steph referenced some common maintenance things she's needed to perform, such as CVT fluid changes and new struts. But aside from the rattly interior, her car is in really good shape. It dawned on me that she's taken really good care of her Lancer since new, and the previous owner of my brother's simply didn't. Now, I'd hate to throw that owner under the bus since he's also family, but between the horrific roads and lack of care, you end up with a car in the shape that it's currently in. This Lancer has a little over 87,000 miles, and it's fallen right apart. The interior rattles and groans and strains going down the road. All the HVAC knobs feel like they're about to fall off in the near future. The motor mounts are needing replacing a second time, as my brothers mistakenly used Jeep Patriot ones that bolted right in, but are softer, I guess. And as a result, the car doesn't stay in fifth gear, unless you hold it in gear. Because, yeah, the motor is just rocking right around, and... This, of course, means it's pulling on the shift cable, which is pulling it out of fifth gear. The struts are bad and crunch over large bumps, and it has the interior grime you'd see on lack of detail in the, over the course of seven years. My brother is a mechanic, and like most mechanics, he's slowly getting his car fixed up over time. This car is an appliance to him, as it gets far better fuel economy than his Super Duty, which is getting a lift kit at the time of the filming, or his 1989 Toyota pickup that he traded to the said family member for the Lancer. Crap, that truck even appeared really early on the channel, and boy, if you think my stuff's unwatchable now, don't sit through that one. <laughs> Anyways, it's an appliance. It's a cheap car for him, and it gets him to and from work without much fuss. The car just happens to be falling apart around him. The current state of disrepair is just another opportunity for him to tinker on it when he gets the time. He's a tinkerer first and foremost, and honestly, he's made sure his wife's had a much nicer car than him. This particular car is a 2013 Mitsubishi Lancer GT. It's the seventh generation of Lancer and is one of the last cars designed under Mitsubishi's partnership with Chrysler. 
This means it sits on Mitsubishi's GS platform, and it shares its chassis with such great vehicles as the Dodge Caliber, Jeep Patriot, first-generation Jeep Compass, Dodge Avenger, Chrysler Sebring Slash 200, and the Dodge Journey. A vehicle I truly loved so much that I needed to make two vehicles on it. <laughs> yeah, I just kicked something. Anyways, putting aside the abuse of this particular car, I would rank the 7th Gen Lancer over any of those vehicles. Mitsubishi actually put some thought into its design making even the lower level Lancers look like the outstanding Halo Lancer Evolution 10. Unlike the Nana minivan proportions of the journey, or whatever the hell that was going on with the final generation of Sebring. Mitsubishi also knew how to package the different trims differently, as I struggle to come up with words, as they actually have unique traits to them, unlike just bare minimum equipment upgrades. This is a GT, a new for 2013 model. It took the sporty wannabe Evo body kit of the SE and offered it without the standard all-wheel drive of the SE. Sport tuned suspension, a 5-speed manual, and the larger 2.4-liter 4-banger over the base 2-liter. You also got upgraded interior materials, according to the press of the time, and little tidbits like the fake billet gas cap straight off of a Hummer H2. As much as I like the styling in the Evo 10, by 2013, the 7th generation Lancer was just an outdated car. It was small for its class, especially at the time when you compare it to the larger Chevrolet Cruze, the newly introduced Dodge Dart, the newly introduced 11th generation Honda Civic, I'm not going to look that up right now, etc, etc. On top of Kia and Hyundai greatly stepping up their games. The other manufacturers were up in their interior games at this point, as the shrinking compact car buyers pool saw the competition force themselves to step it up. The stereo in the Lancer is straight out of 2005, not 2013. And the key fob is a tacked on piece that you still have to insert into the ignition switch and turn not the key to start the car. Fun fact, you don't even need the key fob in there or even be inside the car. It just has to be near it, and you can start the car. As my brother found out one morning as he got in his car, started it, drove it 30 minutes to work, only to find that his keys were still on the kitchen counter. <laughs> yeah, it's just a really tacked on feature for this. At this time, most car manufacturers were just putting push button starts, and yeah, this is just a cheap reaction to that. Of course, the engine options were increasingly archaic as direct injection and hybrid models were starting to get introduced at this time. This car simply does not get good fuel mileage for its class. Anyways, the 7th generation Lancer would limp on with minimum updates until 2017, and it quietly exited the American and global market without much outcry. People did miss the Evo, but still... And there's also an 8th generation, but that's only available in China, and that's just a styling update to the 7th generation. As Mitsubishi went solo in the 2010s, they lost their Chrysler cash, and they quickly realized they didn't have said cash to constantly update their fleets of cars and SUVs. Existing models would quickly fall behind their classes, as they lacked updates, and would live long lives due to the lack of capital to replace them. When we did get new models, it would be stuff like the current cheapest car sold in America, the Mirage, and the cheap cash-in of a 90s nostalgia in the Eclipse Cross, which honestly isn't a bad crossover, but yeah, you didn't have to call it the Eclipse. Nissan has since acquired 34% of the company in 2016, and slowly, things are getting better. This means new models will have Nissan bones, like the recently debuted 4th Gen Outlander crossover. It actually looks like a very good product. The Lancer, however, would fall victim of neglect. Just like the original ownership of this particular car. Problems piled up, and they were ignored until they couldn't be ignored anymore. And like the company that built this car, it has been thrown a lifeline with new cash and care in future. The problems will be addressed, and there is hope. The odds were stacked against them, and people doubted they'd be around for much longer. 
But if competitive models in their classes, like the previously mentioned Outlander, promises, you can't help but hope for the future of Mitsubishi. The 2013 Mitsubishi Lancer GT, or this 2013 Mitsubishi Lancer GT, has had a rough life. But I had to separate that from the Lancer as a whole. I wanted to root for this car. I wanted to root for the Mitsubishi Lancer, much as I wanted to root for Mitsubishi as a whole. But a bad example of a car can sour your taste. This Lancer happened to be a really bad example of the 7th generation due to its... issues. I'm glad I sat on this episode for a while, as it took me time to really think about my thoughts of the car. I do have experience with these cars, and they're much better examples than this one. And this car is almost a totally different experience than those other experiences. Something to keep in mind the next time you drive a shitbox. That particular car may be bad, but a good example might be a totally different experience. Something to keep in mind of when these cars get cheap and abused over the course of 10, 20, 30 years. 2013 Mitsubishi Lancer GT Almost a decade of neglect has produced an uncertain future, much like the company that built it. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you once again for watching another episode of Wookie Drives. Two shoutouts this week. First, to my brother for letting me drive and rag on his beat-up daily driver. And second, to automotive journalist Steph Schrader, who was gracious enough to answer my questions and give feedback on the 7th generation Mitsubishi Lancer. Her insight really helped me come up with a proper way to talk about this car and Mitsubishi Lancers as a whole. Anyways, if you happen to have a car or truck you'd like to see on the show, and you happen to be in the Charlotte, North Carolina area, submissions can be made by emailing wikidrives at gmail.com. Be sure to follow the official Facebook page for channel updates and shenanigans. And follow my Twitter and Instagram at WookieAutomoTV for more Wookie shenanigans and rants and raves and whatever dumb BS that I happen to be posting at the time. Be sure to give the video a like, share with all your friends, leave a comment with some feedback, I'm always trying to improve, and hit that subscribe button for more Wookie Drives like these. Finally, thank you so much for watching, and have a good night. What are you doing? I got a tail, babe. You mean my parents?